Welcome to the world of probiotic foods. This is Cultured Food Life with your host, Donna Schwenk. Welcome, everybody, and thanks for joining me. And today we're going to be talking about a healing crisis, and especially with when you start to consume fermented or cultured foods, which are the same thing. Um, you might have what they call is a healing crisis. And it's something that happens when the body starts a detoxification process. The process is really a program of natural healing, and it's kind of how the body um, heals itself. It's a common occurrence among some individuals you start consuming cultured foods. And here's the deal. When you first start consuming cultured foods, your body is flooded with good bacteria. Then there's a dying off of certain pathogenic organisms in the body. And these organisms can be bacteria, viruses, fungi, or other harmful pathogens. Now, the medical term for a healing crisis is a Herkimer reaction. The cells release toxins into circulation and the body cannot eliminate them quickly enough. The colon gets bogged down because it's got too much debris in it. And besides containing massive amounts of beneficial bacteria, cultured foods, foods like kefir, kombucha, cultured vegetables, also contain many active enzymes that act as extremely potent detoxifiers. There's a huge amount of good bacteria in cultured foods, and it's like sending in an army to clean the house inside of you. It's a really, really good thing, although it can be uncomfortable in the beginning and a bit scary if you don't understand what's happening. Now, let me explain it. This is a little bit more technical, but it'll explain it better for you. So here's the deal. Food feeds bacteria. Different foods feed different types of bacteria. You will have a major shift in your diet when you start consuming billions of probiotics and cultured foods or large amounts of prebiotic foods, which are things like fruits, vegetables, seeds, nuts. Um, they make bacteria grow. And this can cause a major shift in a gut po population of bacteria. Now, the winners are those who have the most bacteria in numbers, and the losers will die. So lipopoliosaccharides, or LPS, are large molecules consisting of a lipid and a polysaccharide that are bacterial toxins on the outside cell wall of dead bacteria. Now, let's say you have a lot of cultured foods that have billions of probiotics in them, and you take a lot, which I don't recommend because it can really change things fast. Um, but the microbes get really excited when you do this because now they have the numbers to go after harmful bacteria, yeast and other um, pathogens, and then LPS, lipopolysaccharides, starts spilling into your blood, and it can make you feel pretty crappy, and your stomach may feel upset, or you may have low energy, but remember, this is usually short-lived. This is a the body cleaning itself out. This is the healing crisis. Bad bacteria die off, and new healthy bacteria multiply and grow, and when you eat a lot of prebiotics, which again are fruits, vegetables, fibers, nuts, things, seeds. Um, those are the food for the bacteria. That's what they eat, and they grow and multiply. So you feed some bacteria and starve out others, and the same process can occur. You really want this healing crisis because it truly is the road to recovery. You'll gain a much-needed understanding of how your body works. Every day, all day long, everything you eat is either feeding good bacteria or bad bacteria, every, every meal. And the vast majority of people... Um, when they have a healing crisis with cultured foods or when they start even just changing their diet for the health, for the better, which is healthier foods, um, they'll probably experience some of these symptoms. Some are mild, some are more severe. It just depends on what's going on in your gut, how many pathogens you have, how much gut bac a good bac bacteria you have. And for instance, candida, if you have a lot of candida, it's very, um, it puts up a ruckus when it dies off. It gives off 80 toxins. It's it really, it should not be the vast majority um, of bacteria in your gut. This particular yeast can grow and multiply like crazy. Candida is known for this. And if you have a lot of good bacteria in your gut, you cannot have a lot of candida because it pushes it out, pushes it out of the way. It pushes it back to its rightful corner. Um, but when you've taken a lot of antibiotics, candida has room to spread out and grow, and it does. And when it does it really causes a lot of problems. So you want lots of good bacteria um, and your healing crisis might be more severe if you have more candida. Now, symptoms usually lessen rather quickly and within two to three days or, or at least a week. Um, sometimes it can last longer if you've really got an imbalance going on. 
And as bacteria and yeast overwhelm the body with many new strains from the cultured foods you're consuming, it can cease to function optimally because there are 100 trillion microbes in your gut. Um, there's about, I think, 2,000 known species. And I suspect there, they suspect there could be even more than that because there's a lot of subspecies and things like that. But most of the bacteria in your gut is good. It should be very good. Um, and there are also smaller amounts of bacteria that are not so helpful that you actually need in small amounts. Um, things that help you digest heavy metals and things like that that you normally couldn't handle on your own uh, digestive system. So bacteria-like numbers, and when a certain strain begins to dominate, they crowd out the weak ones. It's crowded in your gut, and so they're going to fight for occupancy. Um, they shoot at each other with a lictin substance to kill each other. That's what yeast do. Um, you can liken it to a chemical warfare going on inside of you. Um, and so when you suddenly flood your body with a bunch of new species, and a lot of them in the form of cultured foods, it can really cause a ruckus, depending on how well your gut is established um, with, the, with the good bacteria. Now, every system in your body works together to eliminate waste products and help regenerate new tissues. Disease can occur when the body is not healthy enough or does not have the vitamins and minerals and proper amounts of good bacteria to make it through its natural healing crisis for one reason or another. A body system gets overloaded with toxins and struggles to keep, you to keep you very, very healthy. So your body needs the proper support in order to heal itself. And, and as the toxins build up in your body and you, and you don't rid yourself of them, um, diseases can occur. And it can, this is one of the reasons why we get these diseases to begin with, because I saw an analogy one time where it was like they had a fish in a, in a fish bowl and it was feeding it. And then it, the fish bowl got dirty or dirty because they didn't clean it. And as it got dirtier, the fish got sick and eventually it died because there's just too many toxins in there for the fish to survive. And it's the same within your body. When you have so many toxins and things don't naturally, you're not naturally detoxifying like you should because you're putting in more toxins than you are being able to detoxify them, then you get diseases. And the symptoms that you get of a healing crisis may be first identical to a disease where you feel bad, you get nauseous, you don't stomach's upset, you have diarrhea, um, but or even you can mimic things like a yeast infection because stuff is dying off. You think you're getting worse, but actually you're eliminating those old cells and mimicking the disease and making you feel worse when the truth is you're actually getting better. It's just, I see this a lot. People will say, oh, I think I'm getting a yeast infection because I have this discharge, but also, often it's just them, the cells that um, the liposaccharides that are dying off because the, they have accumulated so much. Um, and so it just kind of floods your body and is trying to eliminate it through every way it, it possibly knows how. So here are some of the reactions um, that can happen as, you know, your body is detoxifying itself through different pathways. And the cells have an opportunity to release an even greater than normal amount of stored toxins, metabolic waste, pathogens, and unwanted material. An initial healing crisis, like I said before, lasts around three to three to four days. But if you have low energy and a lot of toxins, it may last a little longer than that. Something I've seen quite commonly is when one feels when one feels at their best and most energized, the body is healthy enough to heal and start the stage for elimination. I see this a lot with people. Um, once they get like enough vitamin C in their diets, um, and things like that, the body feels, okay, well, we can start to eliminate some of these um, pathogenic bacterias. And, I mean, you have dormant viruses in you, like almost more than bacteria in your body, you have a ton of viruses. And you don't know that because a lot of them are dormant, but the body stores them. And um, this will help rid you of some of those, allow you to be healthier. You're always going to have all these different types of of microorganisms in your body. That's just who you are. That's who, that's what nature is. It's all around us in nature. Um, but when you're healthy enough, your body just handles it all. And you have energy. You feel good. Your skin looks good. You have, The whites of your eyes are white. Um, but when the toxins start building up um, and they want to get eliminated, they dump into the bloodstream. And that can, that can happen and make you feel a little nauseous, not good. Maybe go to the bathroom more. Um, you may have low energy, and that is a sign of a healing crisis. Now, my own experience with a healing crisis happened briefly at the very beginning when I first started doing cultured foods. 
um, I experienced like, I remember it's so funny because I think this happened to my daughter. We would almost feel like we were getting a fever, but we really didn't have one. But the body was heating up and it, and then it would go away an hour later. And I was like, what was that? And I also had to go um, urinate a lot, go to the bathroom a lot. I had fatigue, but it only lasted a couple of days. And then I had this renewed state that I had never had before. Um, and here are some of the things that could happen. You can have diarrhea or loose stools or constipation because sometimes the colon gets overloaded with debris and can't eliminate it fast enough. You can feel like kind of like hot like I did or um, it can make you feel like heated up. And uh, headaches or fatigue, body odor, especially body odor, I did have that too. Discolored schools, nauseous or digestive upset, um, increased urination, sinus stuffiness or drainage, sore throat, gas and bloating, and emotional distress. You can feel, you know, like, oh, the world's coming to it. And I kind of did. I remember that. So when you have diarrhea and constipation, two conflicting symptoms can happen, and they can either be diarrhea or constipation. Constipation can occur as the liver becomes congested with an overload of toxins. And a lot of extra debris of debris can accumulate in the colon as the body tries to shed all the waste from the die-off. And diarrhea can be the body's way of removing built-up toxins more quickly. And so you might experience one of these as your body adjusts to all these new occupants that you've ingested. If you experience either one of these symptoms, make sure you drink a lot of fluids, um, especially water to carry off the toxins. I like to do warm teas. Another helpful food is psyllium husk. This is a fiber that is, it really works very well when you're having a crisis like this. It's able to pass through your digestive system without being completely broken down or absorbed. It absorbs water and becomes this compound that benefits constipation or diarrhea, both of them. And it helps blood sugar, it helps blood pressure, it even helps cholesterol and weight loss. It's a, it's a really good fiber. It's a really good thing to, to add to your diet. You just need to have a lot of water with it. And it's a great tool for when you're healing and struggling. And you can use it in your everyday life too. It's great. It will thicken your keeper naturally just by stirring in a spoonful. Uh, Psyllium husk aids your body in many ways. And it, especially if you're having a healing crisis, I have recommended. Now, the other really important thing is the mineral that really helps if you're constipated is magnesium. And the best way to get magnesium is through your skin and supplemental magnesium gels, oils, or bath salts. And I do this all the time. I take a bath two or three times a week of magnesium salts because it helps me so much. And I notice when I don't have it that I'm, I don't sleep as well. I'm not as relaxed. I'm not as calm. I'm more hungry. Um, because these minerals are often, often some of these signs are often um, mineral deficiency. And uh, supplementing with magnesium helps with so many things. Sleeps, aches, pains, elimination, um, blood pressure, acid reflex, stress, and much, much more. And it does do that. It's pretty powerful. So like I said, I do it three to four times a week in a bath, but you can use oils. I actually sell them because I really love them, guys. I have oils and gels and this magnesium Sports spray that I use all the time. I literally just sprayed it on my neck because my neck is all stiff because I slept funny last night. And I've had so many people tell me that this magnesium spray is freaking them out because it's helping so much because it goes immediately. It dilates the blood vessels so it abs absorbs that magnesium really quickly. And I absolutely love this stuff. I don't. I just can't imagine my life without it because it does so many things. I'm naturally low in magnesium. I really struggle with that, and I've known that for since I was a young woman, but it, I actually wrote an article about how magnesium saved my life during my pregnancy. And it is a very powerful mineral that is used by 300 functions in the body. If you're going to start doing uh, culture, reviews, I really recommend you get some magnesium gels, oils, or bath salts, whatever you like. I've got soaps. I got everything because I love this so much and I use it all the time. Um, and I think most people are deficient in magnesium. That's a, not me just saying that. It's a known fact. And stress gets rid of magnesium. There's a million things that get rid of magnesium. And when you're changing, magnesium is a really important mineral to have. Like when you're changing your diet, when you're trying to get healthier. I just can't, I can't say enough about it because it has helped me so much. It was something that they gave me when I had my third daughter and I was in the hospital with high blood pressure. They gave me a drip that was of magnesium to bring down my blood pressure and I actually, the bath salts that I got from Health and Wisdom, who is a fabulous company, actually used, they used the same grate that they use in the hospitals. And believe you me, 
I can tell the difference with their stuff. It is magnesium chloride. It is fabulous. And um, I can tell if I don't have it for a while, it makes a big difference. So enough about that. I just really love it. Okay. Now your emotions, um, they change all the time. But when you are having a healing crisis, it can bring up all kinds of of emotions, uh, conditions, and personal issues. Um, According to neuropharmacologist Candice Perth, the body is your subconscious mind. And our physical body can be changed by the emotions we experience. Her research revealed the integrated psychology behind the emotion-body connection. A feeling sparked in our mind or body will translate as a peptide being released somewhere in our organs, tissue, skin, muscle, and endocrine glands. All of these peptide receptors on them can have access and stored emotional information. And this means that emotional memory is stored in many places in the body, not just or even primarily in the brain. You can access emotional memories anywhere in a peptide receptor network in many ways. And I think unexpressed emotions are literally lodged in the body. And I really do believe that. I've, I've experienced that. The real true emotions that need to be expressed are in the body trying to move up and be expressed and therefore integrated, made whole, and healed. And I know this has happened to me so many times. And I felt more emotional as my body was releasing um, and having a healing crisis through those stored emotions, chemicals, and toxins that I created throughout my life experience. And I think more and more we're starting to understand how intricately connected the body, mind, and gut actually are. So here's something. Be good to yourself, you guys, during this time. Remember, your body knows how to heal you. And I, I have lived this. It's, it's been doing it for years. It's been taking care of me for years. You guys are just not paying attention to it until you have a health crisis, which happened to me. And it was, I'm so thankful for the health crisis that I had in my life that made me change and made me really connect to a healthier lifestyle, which is so easy and is so much fun to enjoy. I see so many people not enjoying their lives because they don't feel good. And it's so important to not only take care of your body, but your mind. And when you take care of your gut, it takes care of both. And it works in a marvelous way. Okay, so now we have two methods. A detoxification reaction is more likely to occur when you consume larger amounts of cultured foods. And I just got a a forum post about this. One lady had two cups of kefir and gave one cup to her husband, and she went through a healing crisis because that is a lot. That is billions and billions and billions of probiotics. Now, she's better now after a few days, but that is an enormous amount. So I suggest a fourth to a half a cup Um, of kefir and maybe a a few spoonsful of cultured veggies or, you know, just a little bit of kombucha, two to four ounces. But if you know your gut is out of whack and you have candida overgrowth or an autoimmune condition, you may wish to start even more slowly, like have them every other day. So if these symptoms occur, the degree of discomfort is going to depend on how healthy your gut is when you begin. And I often recommend people go very slowly. Healing takes time and you go through phases. And if you're feeling overwhelmed and not well, the die off is too much, then just you just need to stop consuming the cultured foods, let things clear out, let the die off subside, and then have smaller amounts when you begin again. Um, and maybe do it every other day so that you're not taking in until the layers of toxins that have accumulated are eliminated. Now, I have another approach that people have done that my daughter has done, and I call it the nuclear blast off where she just took large amounts. Um, It can be very uncomfortable, and I don't recommend it for the beginners, Um, but I have seen many people do this, and they take like a cup of kefir and half a cup of veggies and 16 ounces of kombuchas, and then the body cleans out. But it it can be kind of uncomfortable as the body eliminates all these heavy metals and toxins and um, large amounts of pathogens. So if you're, you know, uncomfortable or you're worried about it, start slowly, and I have a method here. Fourth to a half a cup of kefir. Start with a fourth cup and then see how you do. Two to four ounces of kombucha and one tablespoon of cultured veggies. And then if you want to consume more, you can, but just give it some time to see how you do on that. And many people don't have symptoms. Some are just fine because their guts are very healthy. So don't be discouraged or think this healing crisis is permanent. It's temporary. It's a, really a great way for you to begin to listen to your body as it talks to you through these symptoms you're having. Um, the healing can begin once you clean out those toxins and you'll learn so much about your body and what it needs 
and what's important to it and how to feed it, how you can shine from the inside out. I know all this because it happened to me. And I can show you how to make these foods. You know, I'll put the link description below. It's a great way to heal your body. So I hope you'll, you'll give it a whirl and give it a try and see how you do and start your way to healing and detoxification. It is, it is a wonderful way to start to really become healthy. Have a good one, guys.